All right. I'm going to take the next five to 10 minutes to walk you through ServiceNow's process optimization solution, which is the brand name that we give our in-platform process mining capability that essentially allows you to x-ray your workflows and find opportunities to improve. So today we're gonna to focus in on the incident process. So I'm gonna come in here to this incident process optimization project that we've mined. I'm gonna open it up and walk you through the types of analysis that you can do with process optimization. So immediately you're gonna land on a summary and insights page. And this is gonna give us a high level understanding of my process kind of where it stands in terms of some key KPIs that we're focused on. So if we think about incident management, we're typically gonna be focusing on our average time to resolve incidents or our MTTR, as well as our percent of incidents that are resolved by the first assigned group, which is a leading indicator of MTTR and significantly impacts that metric. Then as we move down the screen, we're gonna focus in on the improvement opportunity section. And this is gonna guide you to areas to focus in on. For example, maybe I'm, it's gonna call out tickets that are taking longer than seven days to go from resolve to close or incidents that go directly to closed or maybe our incidents that are open and resolved by the same person. Those are all things that have potentially are of interest to me and that I wanna focus in on. We provide these pre-configured examples as part of content packs. Um, but you can certainly create your own for process issues that you're suspicious of or things that you're already aware of, but trying to isolate and approve upon over time. Then as we move down the screen, we're gonna to get to the variation analysis section. And this gives us insights into all the different routes our incidents are taking. and also helps us understand how well we're conforming to our planned path that we had designed for the process itself. And from here, you can see right now, we're just looking at the highlights from a route perspective. But if we wanted to focus in on the routes that are most taken or the ones that are taking the longest amount of time, we can focus in on those right from here. And then as I move down the screen, I get even more insights and we'll get to the bottleneck analysis section. Um, this is gonna allow us to focus in on certain transitions that may be problematic um, to ours. In this case, we've got a waiting caller info and going to resolve, right? There's, there's one that, a path that a lot of tickets are taking and that jumps out to me because if we're still waiting for the caller info, how are we getting to resolve? It seems like we're, we're closing that because we're not getting the information and that may lead to a frustrated end user. And on any one of these things, whether it be variation, bottlenecks analysis, or those finding cards, you always have the ability to click right from there and get to the analyst workbench, which is going to give us this visualized process map for just, in this case, just the tickets that are going through that path of awaiting caller info to resolved. Right. For our purposes here though, although I've isolated it down, I'm gonna clear all the filtering and just allow us to start from scratch and walk you through some of the, the flexibility that the analyst workbench gives you because it, it not only visualizes our process for us, but it gives us a ton of flexibility to look for improvement opportunities. So first and foremost, let's just look at some of the basic stats about the process model we're looking at. So here I can see that this model is showing us about 22 and a half thousand incidents that have traversed 3.2 thousand different unique paths. On average, it's taking three weeks for these incidents to reach closure, but there's a three month standard deviation, which means there's a ton of variability and opportunity here. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Dan, you, you say that there's 3,200 unique routes. This, this map doesn't look like that, look that way. It's kind of, it doesn't seem like there's that many different paths. Well, that's because we default to isolate down to just the top 20% of the different paths. If I started to expand this, right, you can see there's there's a lot of variability here. There's a lot of different routes that these, these tickets are, are taking. Um, and this is one of the reasons why process mining is, is so valuable because this could get really hard to read really fast. But this is, process mining is gonna help us focus in on the largest opportunities and not just those one-off stories that, that we may hear. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this back to something that's a little bit more readable for us and get to that 20% again and just bring the map to a readable size for us. 
It's also helpful to come in here and start adding in a, a secondary metric to the map, like average duration. So right now you can see for each one of the transitions, we're getting visibility into the volume or the total occurrences of tickets going through that, that transition phase. But I can also add a secondary metric here and say, I wanna look at the velocity or the average duration of the tickets in each of the hops as well. And what we can do, uh, I, I always like to come down here and anytime on the map, I see an arrow that's going backwards, for example. Here I see this uh, kind of, I see an arrow, an waiting caller info going back up into in progress. And, and that those tend to be areas of opportunity because there's some rework or inefficiency going on there. When I see these, I, I like to use a, a skiing analogy here because to me, these maps look like ski trails on a mountain. And if I think back to my days when I was skiing, anytime I was going down the mountain and then had to go back up for some reason, it typically wasn't a, a positive experience for me. So what I can do is I can focus in just on that transition and see that there was about 2,400 total occur occurrences of tickets going backwards and 19, you, uh, 1,900 unique occurrence. And that means that there was, that's 500 of those tickets that, that went back and forth more than once. Um, and, and one of those tickets, at least one of those tickets uh, was going back and forth six times. All in all, there's 11 years worth of time spent by these tickets that are going back up the hill, which seems like something that we can, we can approve upon. Now, I could also use our bottleneck analysis here to see those transi transition areas that were, were problematic. Right, if I, and if I come over here and you know, if I get into bottleneck analysis, you can start seeing the individual transitions, their average durations, their standard deviations, their max occurrences. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna focus in on just the, that, that hop or those two back and, back and forth, from my in progress to awaiting caller info and then awaiting caller info back to in progress. And if I, if I look at that scenario where we're, we're going through and awaiting caller info, there's 22 years of combined lost productivity between all the tickets that are moving through there. Uh, so let's isolate those. And we're gonna do that by coming over here, clicking on awaiting caller info, and I'm just gonna say apply transition. And this is gonna show me now or isolate down to the incidents, all the incidents that just went through that node. And I can configure this and add a specific, very specific paths that I wanna isolate in on. But in this case, we're just gonna isolate the awaiting caller info path. And I'm now down to just those uh, tickets that are moving through that path. And if I look at the stats again, I can see that I've got about 7,100 records that pass through that um, and, and, and pass through that. And their average duration is, is somewhere in the, the two week uh, period. Now, in addition to this, we can use the breakdowns on the right to filter out and focus in on certain areas. So right now we're looking at an analysis of different channels uh, that these tickets that are waiting for are coming in via. But if I wanted to look at it by assignment group or category or service, I could do that. And these are all completely configurable. Let's go back to channel for a second. And I can see the majority of these tickets that wind up awaiting caller info they're going and coming in via, via self-service. So that, that looks like an opportunity to improve maybe our intake forms or maybe an opportunity to use the virtual agent to create a, a, a better intake experience. But just looking at this, those self-service ones on average, they're taking about a week. But I can see here the second uh, biggest intake channel for tickets that are going into awaiting caller info is email. And their duration is, is a whole week more, right? So that seems like, a for me, an area that I want to focus in on because I, I want to reduce the amount of time uh, that it's taking to get resolutions for these folks. Um, and it would also make sense that there, these email tickets, we're going to need a little bit of additional information because um, it's a very unstructured channel. Um, it's a very freeform intake channel for folks. So let's just focus in on those, those emails and hit apply here. Now that we've isolated it down to just our tickets that came in via email um, that require the acquirer to enter some, or the email here in this case, to enter some additional information, let's take a look at some of the more advanced features that are gonna help us kind of get to the root cause of this problem. 
So if I wanna click in on this transition note here for awaiting caller info, I can do a couple of different things here. First, I can use the root cause analysis, which will show me a lot of the, some of the influencing factors of these tickets. I mean, I can see right away that 21% of them are, are about or categorized as email, uh, employee portal, right? So tickets that are coming in via email that are awaiting caller, uh, caller info, they have a 13, there's a 13% more likely to, to kind of come in about the employee portal. So let me, let me focus in on just those and narrow it down even further. And then from here, I can then start using cluster analysis to help me get a better understanding of the unstructured data that's living inside of these, these incidents that are coming in. So I'm starting to look at kind of patterns inside of the short description and the description to help me get a better understanding of what's going on. And I can see here, there's a, a few clusters of things that are focused in on email and support and SSO. So clustering is kind of gonna give me a sense of, all right, I see a pattern here, let's focus in on that pattern. And then right from here, again, biggest benefit to being in the platform is I can always get down to the detailed records uh, that make up the analysis that I'm doing. Of course, I have to have rights to do this and then I can take action on these if, if I wanted to. So clearly, if I start looking at these tickets, they're focused in on people come, trying to come in and change the email address of their profile. Um, and, and that seems like there's an opportunity there to either create a service catalog offering to allow people to update the email portion of their profile or a virtual agent conversation to allow people to do this. Um, or maybe such an automation already exists and what we need, the, the solution to this problem or a way to become more efficient is simply just to market that this solution or automation exists for our employees to update their profile. So just to give you that, just to give you an idea of kind of how or some of the flexibility that we have inside of process optimization to help you start analyzing your workflows and finding opportunities to improve, or whether it be adding an automation, changing a behavior in the organization, or simply just stopping doing something that you're doing sometimes is a win uh, for the organization. Now, a couple of additional things here. Now that I've I found this, you have you have a lot of flexibility to start kind of sharing this information with other folks. First and foremost, I can come in here and I can take this, this analysis that I've done and maybe compare it to another analysis. Maybe I wanna start comparing just those paths to the overall path uh, that tickets are taking and, and kind of getting a sense of different breakdowns from a statistical perspective and, and kind of what the impact might be. And then once I've done that analysis, maybe I wanna share this information with somebody else. Maybe I'm on the business analyst side and I wanna share it with the process owner or one of the other folks that's responsible for the service. So I can come in here and I can say, hey, at Mike, let's say, and Mike, take a look at this, this opportunity to improve our employee experience. And I can add a snapshot of the analysis that I did right from here. Or because we're on the platform, one of the things that's unique about the ServiceNow platform when it comes to this process mining uh, capability is the fact that on one platform, we have the ability to provide a complete closed loop experience from a continual improvement management perspective. So we've got things on that. If you look at the, the process of improving a process or a workflow, it's really four phases. There's detect, analyze, improve, and then monitor. And then if you think about the detection phase in the platform, we've got things like notifications on SLAs that will make you aware of a potential opportunity or performance analytics, which could make you aware of an opportunity. And then we've got what you're looking at here, process optimization that really dominates that um, analyze phase to help us really dig into our workflow and identify those improvement opportunities. The platform itself is ripe with ways for you to improve your workflows, whether it's kind of a, using predictive intelligence to automate some of the triaging process that's there, or maybe using the virtual agent to create a better engaging, a more engaging experience for someone to interact with the ServiceNow platform. Or maybe you want to automate a manual task with robotic process automation on the platform. Or maybe it's simply just better coaching our, 
our team members to handle certain problems and using coaching loops to manage that. So, so many different ways to improve. And then the last step, that monitor step, that's where things like performance analytics or continual improvement management come in where I can say, well, all right, I've identified an opportunity to improve. Now I want to start tracking uh, or creating an improvement initiative to make sure that this opportunity doesn't get lost and then tracking whether the improvement is, is making an impact over time. So this is a single click for you to link your analysis to an existing improvement initiative or to create a brand new one right from here. So I can new initiative or link to an existing one. Last thing that I wanna show you here is this automation opportunities piece. So we've got a summary and insights dashboard that kind of helps us understand where we stand right now and gives us quick links into opportunities to improve. You've got the analyst workbench that allows you to start digging into the process and, and kind of really finding opportunities on your own or, or analyzing those things. And then we've got automation opportunities driven by our automation discovery and offering. It's a machine learning driven approach to looking at your data uh, in this case, the incidents that uh, we, we just mined here and pointing out specific uh, automation opportunities uh, based on the textual data inside of the incidents themselves and then showing you the, the potential impact of, of creating some of these automations. Really appreciate your time here today uh, and uh, looking forward to, to talking to you talking to you more about process optimization in the future.